Listen, get your tickets right now. Million dollars worth of game times. Gilly Fest, my birthday party. It's going we on. celebrating. It's going down. I told y'all we was introducing somebody every day. So far, we introduced G Herba. We introduced Babyface Ray. Finesse two times. Finesse two times. That's hilarious. Desi Banks and Dezo. And Rob 49. It's going down, but let me yeah, yeah. Huh? Listen, he was gonna be 50 years old, man. Fuck it. How you gonna come out and celebrate this shit? You're gonna be a half hundred. It's cool. No, listen, no. you better get your tickets. We got listen, and we still gonna keep announcing. Yes, we are. Hit the link, get your tickets right now. It's going down. That's right. A million dollars worth of game. Listen, you ready to check out another episode? What you need to do, buy some merch. You definitely need to subscribe and share to all million dollars worth of game. We got a bunch of different shows coming out. It's going down, but this Gilly Fest. For his birthday, a half hundred. We celebrating July 29th in Philadelphia. It's going down. Listen, we're going to be announcing some more people. But get your tickets. If get you're your not tickets. there, you're going to be upset. And guess what? It's only $75. Mm. All these acts, $75? $75. It's going down, man. This is some shit you don't want to miss. Get your And most tickets. importantly, Gilly and Wallow are going to be there. A million dollars yes. worth of Eight game going to be there. Turning, turning the stage up. And it's just like that, right? You're now tuned into me, 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 million dollars worth of game. Listen, man, we here to promote my fight coming up. Me and Sean Porter, we're going to be fighting. <laughs> it's going to be a two-round match. Uh, each round will be 10 minutes apiece. It's about time. My reaches, they say I got one of the best reaches in amateur street boxing. <laughs> And it's like, you know, I, I, my whole thing is like, I just got off the phone with Al Heyman. He said, listen, man, uh, Showtime, you know. Uh, Al Heyman said he giving you 800, nigga. Al Heyman said, who the hell is this? He right. gave me 800,000. $800, fuck out you know, I'm not stepping on the ring for 800, put my life on the line for them $800. <laughs> that's that that's, that's your thing. debut. That's your debut. For 800, people getting 800? Yes. You mean to tell me when person when a person oh that, that don't it's mean not me it. not me I'm just saying <laughs> but when a person a lot a lot yes. majority you only get eight hundred to go in there a as a professional yes. boxer yes your first fight you might get a couple thousand man I'm thinking I'm gonna get like a unless you was an outstanding amateur or something. so if you are all right all right if you if, were an outstanding amateur you get maybe two thousand what. Two, all right, all right two, now, now, two, now, between damn, go between two and five no no hold on between two and five this is what I gotta know right here. If I go to the Olympics and I get a gold medal, I know I'm, I'm getting a million dollars. It depends. It depends. Mm -hmm. If you if you got that gold, yeah, you you around that ten, that ten thousand. What? That's it? Yeah. 15, oh man, I thought these dudes were getting me. I think on the Wheaties boxes and shit, they nah. come back and they only get ten thousand. It take a while, man. It take a while to get to the money. But see, but see, this the thing. So how much do the cut man get? They they give with whatever the the the, the whatever they 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 decide to give them. Five yeah. percent, nigga. Yeah, little three yeah. percent. Three percent of the whole person. When you turn pro, you probably don't even have a cut, man. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's What's wrong with you? Yeah. The band aids is your cut, man. It Johnson take, and it Johnson. It take a while to get to it, you know. Damn, that's bad, man. I thought I might got to go another route. You come from the rap game, man. You know. I'm thinking, damn, man. You know, I thought it ain't I was no be... different. This nigga said, I I'm looking at people. Go and I'm like, damn. When I get my fight, I'm gonna get that dude from Tank Corner. Dude over here from a Benavidez corner dude. I'm thinking I'm going to do all gonna that shit. You're going to be broke. You're going to be broke as a motherfucker. They got get this train all the motherfuckers got years in the game. They charge, charge. Yeah. Damn, well, fuck it. I got to agree with Don King, man. He going to give me a bag. You know, Don probably, I keep telling you, Don pull up when you give you, give you 1,500 and fives, fives <laughs> and ones. That shit be looking like seven in the bag. <laughs> Don ain't no joke. Yo, Don used to be, yo, I used to be, a, listen, all I, all I, yeah, I heard you. I used to say I used to be in love with Don. Yeah, Don was my man. <laughs> For a nigga that did twenty years in no, jail, not like you ain't that. supposed to be. I read his book and all that shit. I seen his doc. I seen his movie, and I used to be like Don. Man, I used to read some movies about Don. Love with Don King. Who the fuck <laughs> said some shit like? No, not like that. Yeah, but, you don't. Yeah, but Don, you gotta stop repeating it too. No, that motherfucker out of pocket. But Don, no, I'm just I used saying. To be Don. in love with Don. Uh, yeah, they go try to switch that. it up. I do that if I got in the box game. I said I get with Don. He gonna give me a bag of money. That's all it man. Man, Don was robbing motherfuckers back in the day. Now I don't know if that's the truth. But shout out to Don King. <laughs> I ain't gonna I know, say. Me I know I Tyson know. was mad as shit. That's. <laughs> I ain't gonna say, That's all I know. But man, we got a motherfucking Hall of Fame in the building. He, ain't, he ain't in the Hall of Fame yet, oh, but I know man. he going for sure. Uh, Showtime, Sean Porter. Yes, sir. And I'm gonna ask him something because I, you know, the hardest fight in your life. Mm. Mm. When you was in there, you was like, "This, this motherfucker is dangerous." 
Nah, you don't got time to think like that. You don't got time to think like that. But where you was just like, ah, I, I got to switch up. <sighs> I got to I got to reprogram. The top three, Errol, Terrence, Keith. Who, who number one? <sighs> they, they was all hard nights in their own way. Damn, hard nights. In oh. their own way. You know what I mean? Out of Errol Spence and, and Terrence Crawford, who punched the hardest? Come on, Sean. Don't, don't. You was in there with both of them. You felt both of that power. And see, I'm, who who I, punched the hardest? I'm talking like, yeah. <sighs> it's hard to say. See, it truly when, is. That's when you know you ask some good questions. It tr- when a motherfucker it's, it's started growling like a rock while like, <laughs> 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 shit. Because, yeah, exactly. Like it's it truly is a it's a hard question to answer because it sounds like a cop out, but. When when you in the midst of the battle, I can recognize what I got hit with, but I can't reflect on how hurt on on that hurting. You know what I mean? And with me doing this as long as I did it, it became second nature to mm-hmm. get hit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, the body shots, those are the ones you feel the most mm. because those have a, an effect where it's like it's like it, it lasts a little longer. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and and then when you look at the two fights that I had with Earl, Earl hit me with a punch. I think it was the 11th round, the 10th or the 11th round, what would cock my head back like, I, like I've never seen that myself get like that before. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then Terrence hits me at two different times in one round and I go down off both punches. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so I just, I think that both of them have, an, they have a, a, it's it's not the punch hurting, it's the way it's delivered. Mm-hmm. Arrow has a way of delivering a punch that's so accurate. That it will stung you, but then Terrence has a way of delivering a punch that is so fast and so out of nowhere that it'll stun you. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So it, it it really again like it's hard to say who has the hardest punch. You know what I mean? Mm. This episode of Million Hours Worth of Game is brought to you by Body Armor. Let me tell you something: Barstool hydrates with Body Armor, rides with Team Body Armor. Body Armor is the official hydration partner of Barstool Sports. When when you up at the office, you see it everywhere. You see it in the refrigerators. You see it it's stocked everywhere. So soon as the refrigerator is empty, which is very quick, I'm talking about people drink this like 95 self. You feel what I'm saying? It's flying out the refrigerator. But it's stocked everywhere. So soon as the refrigerator empty, we can fill the refrigerator up. And it's the best hydration, real hydration. With electrolytes, potassium, vitamins, no artificial stuff, no fake ingredients, etc. Sports drink and sports water is all over the office. Anytime you visit Barstool, you understand that Barstool and Body Armor partnership is about to be humongous. I'm talking about it for the next few years. It's taking over. Body Armor. The official hydration partner of Barstool Sports. Top athletes drink it too, like Christian McCaffrey, Donovan Mitchell, Rana Ascuna, Alex Morgan. So tap in. The, f- the favorite flavor out right now, strawberry lemonade. I'm just saying. You need to taste that. Fruit punch is pretty good as well. So stay, so stay tuned. Get you some body armor. It's now on Amazon. Get you some. Right. This episode of Million Hours Worth of Game is brought to you by Proper Wow. Proper Wow is a clean, all-day energy shot designed to boost your energy, your focus, your productivity without any jitters or crash. So I know you're used to these, you know, these energy drinks where you, know, you, you drink them and you're like, you shaking, you feel like you done had some dog food. You're like, huh. Nah, this is not that. Proper wild. No preservatives, no artificial sweeteners, no horrible chemicals. Just natural tasting energy shot with clean ingredients that works. You know, Wilder was off the proper wild. You know, he was a little, he, he, his energy was right. You know what I mean? I give it to him. His energy was right. He was good. He ain't had no jitters, no shakes, no nothing, no, no, no type of kicks back. When you're dealing with Proper Wild, Proper Wild is available at a store near you. Check out their store locator and make sure you get you some Proper Wild. 
the energy drink. Little shot. No jitters. No crashing. It's proper. Proper wild. Get you some. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Mosin Coors. We celebrate life's biggest moments with champagne. But everyday achievements deserve to be celebrated too. Whether it's closing out your to-do list, getting somewhere on time, or just making it through another hard day. So the next time you accomplish something within your everyday life, make sure you celebrate it with Miller High Life. The champagne of beers, because that's what living the high life is all about. Welcome to the high life. Living the high life means you appreciate quality and timeless classics. You believe the best part of life are not rare, but yet hard to achieve. You celebrate achievements with your everyday champagne of beers. Coors. Like people have done for generations. So welcome to the high life. Go to Miller High Life slash millions to find Miller High Life near you. Celebrate responsibly. 2023 Mil Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 2023 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Right. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Zip Recruiter. Attracting top talent when hiring is hard. And with the current labor market conditions, it's harder than ever. But ZipRecruiter is ready to tackle your recruiting challenges. ZipRecruiter knows how tough it is right now, but they've figured out solutions for your problems you're facing. See for yourself. Right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash game. So you can use ZipRecruiter right now for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash game. Need to hire ASAP? ZipRecruiter smart technology finds great matches for your jobs sooner than later. To reach more of the right people, ZipRecruiter posts your job to 100 plus job sites. When first dibs on talent, ZipRecruiter lets you invite the most qualified people to apply to your job. ZipRecruiter's pricing is straightforward, no surprise, costs, or none of that. Team up with hiring partners who understand what you need. Zip Recruiter. Four out of five employees who post on Zip Recruiter go to qualified candidate within the first day. Again, within the first day. Just go to exclusive web address to try Zip Recruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash game. Again, ZipRecruiter.com slash game. G-A-M-E. Zip Recruiter, the smartest way to hire. Hire the right people. Zip recruiter. Right. Because this is the biggest fight of 2023, maybe. No, no, no. This is the biggest fight of the last... Decade? Two. Two decades? Damn. Yeah. Two-ish? This this is bigger than Floyd and Pacquiao? I think so. Mm. Not, not Maybe not like from a, from a standpoint of the promotion right. and how many... Uh, how much money this fight's going to... It's no comparison in that right. from that standpoint. Right. But in terms of us being able to calculate who's going to win this fight, we could calculate who was going to win Mayweather versus Pac. Right. You was either clear one way. Mm -hmm. Pac is going to do this and he going to win. Or Mayweather going to do this and he going to win. With Errol and Terrence, how many, how many, how many scenarios do you think? I mean, it's a bunch of scenarios could happen. And they're all realistic, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. When you, so let me ask you a question. When you uh, fought Ugas, you fought Arrow, you fought Danny Garcia, you fought Terrence Crawford, you fought Keith Thurman. Out of all of those fights, who was the hardest puncher in those fights? At the point in time when I fought Keith, I thought he was the hardest puncher. But being retired now, I got to say it's between Keith and Arrow. And Terrence. And if I really, if I truly have to like break it down into which one of those, I might, I might say Arrow. Mm. And the reason why I might say Arrow is because he he he's not a one punch power puncher. Right. You know what I mean? He'll throw three punches and they all got power. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Right. <laughs> Keith will will get you out balance and he's throwing two punches with a lot of power. Yeah. Terrence is is mean with one. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he can whip it back and come mean with another one, but he not about to just sit there, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. With speed and power. Right. You know? Arrow coming with speed and power. 
Well, so you at the same time. Well, you gonna, you gonna leave my man Danny off that list? No, well, Danny's Danny's he did his thing. I'm just say how how my man Danny power is. His power is nice. It's nice. His power is nice. But there there was nothing stunning uh, about about Danny's power. Um, and also Danny telegraphs a lot of the stuff that he does. You know what I mean? You could I could see when the right hand was coming. I could mm-hmm. see when the left hook was coming. You go back and watch the fight with me and Danny, and he hit me with probably two big hooks in that fight. But a lot of the punches, a lot of the hooks that he threw, I was rolling mm-hmm. off a lot of them because I could tell, I could see when they were coming. I think the ones that I got hit with was when, was when I was standing in there in the midst of trying to throw my stuff. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tank and Shakur, you got to pick one. Who you picking? Come on, Sean. You gotta I'm pick pi- one. I'm, I'm you picking, gotta pick one. <laughs> I'm picking Tank, but let me be let me be clear about this, and and also let me be clear about this. I watched Mayweather, and when I watch like when I watch fights, I try to look into a fighter's eyes. I try to look into their their body language, their mannerisms. I try to see what they're thinking, and I try to get to a point where I can see what's gonna happen before it happens. Whether it's a fight that's already happened or I'm watching in real live time. And, I, and I'm able to pick up on what fighters doing, how they doing. I watched your current training and I said, what the hell is he seeing? How is he seeing this before it happens? Mm-hmm. Watch, watch his fights. Mm-hmm. His defense, there's no mistake mm-hmm. in any part of his game where his defense is. Mm-hmm. It's like he's been there before. He, he sees it before it happens. Mm-hmm. You gotta be special. That's that's not that's not trained. Right. You're you 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 were he was gifted. That's a gift. The ability to see what tank is gonna throw before tank throws it. Right. So that's why I said that's that's probably at one thirty five. I think that that's the second best fight to be made in boxing to this one right here. And where do you okay? Devin and Tank. I picked Tank to win, to beat Devin. I don't think Devin has enough. You don't think he has enough? The speed is great. The the in and out that Devin has is great. But you're going to have to take chances against Tank. We've seen every fighter do it. You got to take chances against Tank. Mm-hmm. And that's that's Tank's game. Tank's game is, 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 is making sure you, you take that risk. And he capitalized. Yeah. That boy got power. That is, he has generational power. Damn. This is, a, this is a, in, in his generation. Shit. That's the first time I heard that. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Thank <laughs> Put, you. Push a button for me or something. No, I, I and, ain't got them sounds. I don't need no, those sounds. But he, he has, said, he God, has damn. generational power. Explain that. He punch you, he punch your fucking kids out. You. <laughs> damn. So, so the baby baby's going to feel this shit. <laughs> When they born, they gonna come out. Eh. They feel that shit. <laughs> that wasn't what I meant at first, but that, that that's clean. So right this shit there. is gonna keep happening. For <laughs> right, yeah, motherfucker ain't gonna be living no more. Yes, wow. <laughs> but he has generational power. Who else have we seen with this kind of power at one thirty five in the last ten, the last decade, Nobody. the last two decades? Nobody. And then you keep counting. That makes him a a, a generational. He has generational power. That means that what he's bringing to the ring on fight night, you can't prepare for. You ain't seen it before. And let's be real. Are we going to see it after Tank? When Tank leaves 135, when Tank is out of 130, we don't see anybody else at 130, 135 with that kind of power? No, probably we not. We see Roley has power, but Roley ain't got the kind of delivery that Tank got, Mm-mm. which means a lot of the stuff that Roley throws is going to miss mm-hmm. before that big one land. Mm-hmm. Now, but let me ask you a question. You know, when you talk about Tank, you talk about Devin, you talk about Shakur, break down each one of these fighters, extraordinary fighters, historical fighters, All of them. strength. No, break down what is each one's strength. Yeah. And um, what is each one's weakness. I think, what I, I think out of the three of them, I actually like Shakur the most. Because again, when I can look at you and not see what you see, to me that is extraordinary. Um, uh, Shakur is again, it's like he's been there before. I watched him move in the ring. 
and he moves before the guy even throws his punch. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like I've seen, I saw him do that, and then and then to see him do that in live time in actual fights. There's a difference between sparring yeah. and doing what you do in sparring, and then being that comfortable in a fight. A lot of guys don't come to the ring as comfortable as shape right. as Shakur is. Once the headgear come off and any mean gloves. too, yeah, any mean too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think that that's the best thing that Shakur got going for him is his reflexes and into intuition and his instinct. And distance. And and he controls the distance. Yeah, but absolutely. it's all predicated upon his instincts absolutely. and knowing where to be and how and, and, and things like that. With 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 Dev, Dev is his jab is, you know, he got that paintbrush jab mm-hmm. where he's painting. You know what I mean? He gonna be able to hit you at any point in time. He can change the level and bring it up. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He can punch on the move. Extraordinary boxer. Mm-hmm. Clean boxer. He going he can what he tried to do against Lomachenko, I think that was just a matter of people saying he don't got no power. Mm-hmm. He not taking the fight to people mm-hmm. and things like that. He don't need to. I, I didn't think he needed to either. If if there was one thing I could tell Dev, keep doing you. Right. Fight as clean as you want to fight. Right. Because they can't touch you when you fighting that clean. Right. That kind of boxing style that he got, that in and out that he got, mm-hmm. again, that's a generational talent right there. Mm-hmm. Knowing the range and that distance before it even happens, mm-hmm. and being able to take it away before it happens, he gave it back to Loma in that fight. Yes, go back to doing what you do well because that is the kind of style that can beat a Tank Davis. Right. But then you got Tank, who has virtually it all. Tank can counter punch. Mm-hmm. Tank can come at you. Mm-hmm. Tank can wear the can wear the punches on the gloves. He can wear them on his on his head on his body. He can take some to give it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Again, knowing range and distance, he's masterful at that. Mm-hmm. Took it away from Ryan after the first round. Mm-hmm. Took a couple of rounds from Roley, but then took it away from Roley. Like every single fight. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We got three guys right there that grew up in this sport, understand exactly who they are in this sport, mm-hmm. has mastered their craft. That's, that's three elite fights right there. Mm-hmm. That's a round robin right there. We need Tank and 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 Dev. Winner, Dev and Shakur. It don't matter who the winner. Shakur and Tank. It don't matter who the winner is. Right. We need we need that round robin right there. Right. But do you think it's too early? For that? I think it's 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 we're approaching the time. The reason I say I too think, early because it's, it's about too, money. This shit is yeah. about money. This is money. If game. if anybody is too early, I think for any one of them, I think it's too early. Uh Barring the money, I think it's too early for Dev. I think Dev still got some growing to do, got some maturing to do, and he can can mature into some power. Of course, we know he he on his way out of one thirty five, mm-hmm. so it's kind of a, a now or never situation for Dev. Mm-hmm. But with Shakur, you're right. I think he needs to increase his audience a little bit more. But Tank is see, right there. See, in his for me, prime. I think I think it's too early for Shakur and Dev to fight. I think for Tank and either one of them. Tank it, Tank gonna bring, he it gonna fill sense. it up. It's gonna make yeah. sense for yeah. Tank and either one of them. Yeah. But for Shakur and Dev to fight right now, I feel like the only person that win is the the promoters and the network. They're robbing themselves, right, by fighting each other. Absolutely, right now. because yeah. you because break that down. Because okay, you got to look at it like this. Everybody wanted this fight between Errol Spence and Terrence Bud Crawford two three years ago. And and one thing people love to do is they love to act like they don't want some shit no more <laughs> that they really know they want. You feel me? You know what? Fuck it. I don't even want to see that fight no more because, nigga, it's happening. Oh, shit, it's going down. They probably rumbling. You got to get motherfuckers to that point. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying to where it's though motherfuckers act like they don't even want to see this shit no more because that's how long it took for this shit to happen. You can't just give people shit when they want it. Yeah. When they want it. When they want it. You. This is a business. <laughs> and right now, if Shakur and Dev fight, we talking about three, four, five, six, whatever million dollars for them. When if they fight in two years, we could be talking about twenty five, thirty. 35, 40 million dollars yeah. for him. So that's the difference. Whereas though, in, in, in a lot of times too with these youngins, they be more concerned about proving themselves instead yeah. of getting the business right. You yeah. don't got, you're a professional fighter. You don't have nothing to fucking prove. None of y'all is scared to fight 
no fucking body. <laughs> you, that's what y'all been doing your whole I, life. I hope they're listening. But you got to get the money. You, If I'm going to go in there and I'm going to risk my O fighting another motherfucker that I know is a BMF, he a bad motherfucker too, just like me, it got to be some fucking money involved. Yeah. Like, I tell my young boy, cool boy stuff that all the time. Shout out to Stephen Fault. I'm like, bro, you know you got 20 fights. You beat nine undefeated motherfuckers in 20 fights. Dang. It's not another fighter on planet Earth that can say that. Yeah. Most people don't even fight an undefeated motherfucker right. until they got 20 fights. Right. He got nine undefeated fighters on his resume and got 20 fights. Wow. I'm like, bro, they throwing you to the wolves. You know what I mean? Yeah. Go ahead and beat a couple motherfuckers up for some <laughs> for some easy money yeah. real quick. Yeah. <laughs> but he jumped right in there with anyway. I wasn't out for the easy money, you know? Yeah. And when 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 I was pushing for that Terrence Crawford fight, and my dad was like, you, you gotta you gotta find somebody else. We not get we not getting that. That's not gonna happen for us. And I just I didn't want easy money. Mm -hmm. I wanted the I wanted the right money mm -hmm. in the in the in the fights that was gonna solidify who I am to boxing. You know what I mean? And and anytime you didn't see me in the ring, it was because certain people just weren't willing to fight at that specific time. But you named all the guys that I fought. Right. We, I was out to fight the best. Right. And get up out of this thing before anything happened. Make as much money as I could so that I could parlay that into everything that I'm doing now. Right. Let me ask you, know you a question, mean? though. Because at first I looked at it and I didn't understand it. I thought people was ducking people. Then I realized fighting certain people just because the fans want you to fight them is not smart business. Exactly. I realize that sometimes the money that I'm making sense, yeah. your audience is not strong enough. Yeah. Not that you're good, because now boxing is not even about somebody being a good fighter. Boxing is about who got more of a social impact, who got more Instagram followers, who popping socially. Yeah. You know, in yeah. order to say, you know what, this person is popping so much that he's going to get this many pay per view buys. We don't know what was going through the minds of everybody over there at top rank, but for. For so long, people been saying, "Oh yeah, Terrence ain't never fought nobody. Terrence ain't fought nobody," and I keep, I kept saying, that "He's fighting whoever they put in front of him." Y'all yeah. don't understand the business, right? I, now, I didn't understand the business in terms of how Top Rank chose to move Terrence, but it ain't Terrence's fault that he didn't fight this guy or that guy, right? He wanted to fight whoever they put in front of him, mm -hmm. yeah, and they were picking who they thought from a business standpoint was going to be the best options for him. We don't know if they didn't have belief in him. They, right. We don't know if they they were protecting him or what. Right. But he was able to make his money, and he was able to knock out virtually everybody they put in front of him. Right. You know what I mean? But that again, like that is the difference between what people see and what and what they don't see. Right. They see they see the fight night, and now they see Terrence and Arrow getting in the ring. Y'all don't know what it took to make that fight happen. Right. We were just talking in the other room. Why why isn't that fight happening in Dallas? Right. We don't know before the last three days before they announced that they was gonna be fighting. We don't know if they was talking about what venue they was gonna fight at. Absolutely. We have absolutely have no clue what these negotiations uh, go into. Right. But what we do know is that eventually that fight had to be made right. in order for boxing to win. Right. And, and in order for people to give uh, Terrence Crawford his his respect and his just due, right. even with fighting me, it's mm -hmm. like excuse and reason after excuse and reason. I didn't per me personally, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. How he fights Sean Porter and people still say, "Well, that wasn't the same Sean Porter." No, it was. Mm -hmm. It was. That's the same Terrence Crawford. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like accept it. Yeah. The dude no, is know, bad. You know what I think? I think a lot of times in boxing, I hear something and I just don't understand this. Um, and I think it's with multiple sports you hear shit. This episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by Barstool Sportsbook. Now, if you follow me on any of my social platforms, you know that I am an a admirate user of Barstool Sportsbook. You see, sometimes you guys be beg me for my parlays, for my picks for the day. You know, I'm going a little slower right now because I'm not really a heavy, heavy baseball gambler but soon as football and basketball season starts up 
You guys know Barstool Sportsbooks has the best parlays. You could even even uh, Big Cat gives you some tips. You know me, I'm probably seventy percent on this on the year. So I ain't bragging. I'm just saying I'm pretty good. I'm not telling you to bet with me, but I'm not telling you not to. <laughs> All I'm telling you is I win a lot. Barstool Sportsbook is the best way, the best sports book on the market. Why would you go anywhere else when you could go to Barstool Sportsbook? Right. This episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by Two Loss. Two Loss is a worldwide music distribution for independent artists and labels, making managing your music business easy and in one place. With Two Loss, you can release your music to all major platforms as often as you want, whenever you want. Two Loss also makes collaborating easy. You can seamlessly add payment splits for each release and automatically pay your team and collaborators. So Two Laws do everything for you all in one. You can see how much money you're making. You can make sure everybody's getting paid on time. So if you're an independent artist or you're coming up from the bottom and you're trying to do your thing, Two Laws. We got some dope contests coming up like Two Laws Bracket Challenge and the Two Laws Independent Artist Challenge that kick off after Gilly Fest. So join the Two Lost Artist Bracket Challenge and the Two Lost Independent Artist Challenge. More details to come right after my festival. To get started for free and take control of your music career, twolost.com. Let's get to it. It's going to show you everything is easy. It's, I believe they have the digital dashboard right there so you can see everything that's going on. Everybody can get paid. And you can run a real business as an independent artist. Twoloss.com. Start your career off. Right. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Monaco. Monaco cocktails offer full flavors. Spirit-based canned cocktails that pack a punch with two shots in every can. Serve chilled and cracked one open. With tons of bold, delicious flavors from core cocktails and hard lemonade to classic or spicy margaritas, there's Monaco for everyone. Monaco spirit-based canned cocktails are ready to drink and easy to take on the go. Just serve chilled. Pour it over ice and enjoy Monaco your way. Monaco makes real cocktails for real good times. Double down and get the party started with Monaco cocktails. You need to drink that packs a punch for the fight night. Pick Monaco, hard lemonade, the official vodka can cocktail of UFC. Feel the fun and find Monaco can cocktails at a local retailer near you. Must be 21 to drink and please drink responsibly. The Sean Porter you, you are is who you are because... When two motherfuckers get in that ring, that shit go any way. Yeah. All it takes is one, All it takes one is motherfucking one. punch. And, really? and, and, we, and in the history of boxing, you've seen that happen so many, so many upsets. You're really? like, how the fuck that happened? Yeah. Motherfucker on the mat. Yeah. So I, so when people say that, they be like, oh, you ain't fighting nobody. You ain't fighting. What the fuck? I'm, <laughs> like, you think I got, I'm signed to a promotional no, company. But see, honestly, like, I, when you when you say that, they just saying he ain't fought the, the 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 same competition because when you look at Terrence Crawford, and you look at Bud. I mean, you look at uh, Errol. Errol fought better competition than Terrence Crawford. You know what I mean? Terrence Crawford fought Julius and Dongo, Victor Postal, uh, the Benavidez, Gamboa, um, Jeff Horn. When you look at none of them dudes, none of them really did shit in boxing. When you like, when you look at them, you like, okay, they was all solid fighters, but none of them never really did shit in boxing. Like, okay, Julius Dongo, you got a belt. A lot of a lot of them belts came from promoters trying to keep them fucking belts <laughs> in the promoter shit. So okay, we ain't fighting nobody over here. We gonna keep all these belts right here. You fight him. You fight him. You fight him. So a lot of motherfuckers be getting belts by default. And that's the business. Because they ain't fighting the best motherfuckers. They, they, oh, my man on my promotional shit, he stumbled on a belt. He He's a fucking bum for real. I'm about to beat him the fuck <laughs> up and get this fucking belt. So 
a boxing really got fucked up on that aspect of it when they start saying, oh, it's other sides of the streets and these people only fight these people and this person only fight this. So, but now it's getting back to mano y mano. Yeah. Yeah. Who's the best? Yeah. And I'm I'm respecting it now because before it was on a little bullshit. You know what I mean? Errol fought some real dogs. He fought Danny Garcia. That's a real dog. He fought yeah. Sean Porter. Yeah. That's a real dog. Yeah. He fought Keith Thurman. That's a real fu- no, no no. He yeah. fought the Danish Ugas. Yeah. That's a real fucking dog. He fought Kell Brook. That's a real fucking dog. Yeah. Granted, Terrence did fight Sean Porter and Kell Brook. But he fought them a little later in life after they've been through some wars. Yeah, yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. He yeah. did fight Sean Porter. He did fight Kell Brook. But Kell Brook had at it. Both his eye sockets broke, fucking <laughs> punched out of sunlight. So, and they're not taking nothing away from Bud because he just went in there and did what he had to do. Exactly. That's the hard part. The That's hard, the hard part, part, is, part is being able to determine... When you talk about the level of opposition, right? You know what I mean, like, like even sitting here listening to you, like I forgot about Ndongo and all those other guys that he fought, um, Gamboa and all those guys. But even uh, like, look at Gamboa. Gamboa was an Olympian. You know right. what I mean? So, but at that point in time, when they got in the ring against one another, no, definitely not the same right. Gamboa that came into the that came into the game. You know what I mean? Mm. So, it's just I think it's hard to really determine where your level of competition is based on that, not even at night. Right. Because you could be great one night and be subpar the next night. Right. You know what I mean? Boxing is funny like that, right. you know? But what we do know is that both these guys, for the sake of words, no blemishes. Right. You know, we've seen we've seen Terrence get rocked a couple times. Mm-hmm. We've seen one guy put him down. Ejidus Kavalowskis. Yeah. You got it, huh? Yeah. Well, damn, Bro, I'm, a, I'm a boxer nigga. I know what the fuck's going on. Damn. <laughs> you know, they didn't call it a knockdown, Him. but, but I, I've Him. seen it. But one thing about one thing about Bud though, when you do the eye test, you say, okay. But we've and we've also seen Arrow get buzzed a couple times as well, well you know? Well, I, I I don't know. I don't know if I ever seen him buzzed okay cool not hurt no 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 not hurt yeah buzz like like you know just walk I feel up like i feel like every boxer yeah. got buzz yeah like you, you, you but hurt to me is when a motherfucker hit you with a punch and then they acknowledge okay i got you <laughs> and they coming up on yeah that's what a motherfucker do you yeah. hurt like yeah, yeah, you feel yeah, what i'm yeah, saying yeah. they hit you and then it's yeah. like okay 20 punches about to come after that hit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he back up. He trying to, try yeah. to, <laughs> try to get you the fuck out of here. All you, all you doing is trying to defend yeah. yourself because you trying to get your shit back right. Yeah. That's hurt to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel like every boxer been buzzed. Yeah. But I feel like when you do the eye test, you look at Terrence Crawford, you say, Terrence got a little bit more with him. But then you look at Errol Spencer, you say, Errol Spence is fundamentally sound. Yeah. You like when you go straight up and down, everything is just so tight. Yeah. It's just wham. It's just right from here. It ain't no extension, ain't no, no ain't arm. None of that. It's just right from here. Wham. Straight mm-hmm. up. Wham. 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 It's just. And then you say, what's going to be? Is the dynamics going to beat the fundamentally sound? Right. Right. Or is right. the fundamentally sound going right. to beat the dynamics? Right. You got a multi-dimensional athlete in the ring in Terrence Crawford against a a a very good athlete in 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 the craft of boxing mm-hmm. in in Errol Spence. You know what I mean? And I I do I think that that is the most interesting thing because what I found with with Errol, I kept Errol off balance and I kept I kept him guessing. You know what I mean? I never became predictable with Errol, and I think it forced Errol to kind of come out of his pocket to come to to to, to try to kind of. You know, uh, tame me for the sake of words, you know. Mm-hmm. But then with with Terrence, it's like the rhythm is a little different. The oh, the the cadence is a little different. Five times Earl get rocked. The, <laughs> I the, found the, some. The, the, you, you guys will see it on your side, I'm sure. Five uh, times Earl gets. <laughs> no, that's what they see it on here. Five times Earl got Man, rocked. You see that? Am I on there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he was on there. Cause I know one time I got, I was like, did I get him? I was like, no, nah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Damn, when you ever punch a motherfucker and thought you had him, 
and was like, oh shit, he just he took that. I hit, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Keith Thurman. Yeah. 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 Cause yeah. you hit Keith Thurman with a joint. I was like, damn, yeah. Yeah. Keith yeah. got a fucking chin. Yeah. Sometimes boxing is like a street fight. Yeah. You know how like you thought you got somebody, they come right back. Yeah. And you're like, well, hold up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah, that's how the boxing game is too. Yeah. You land something you know that connected, and I'm supposed to follow up. Yeah. But this dude throwing right back. Right. You know? Well, let me ask you a question. In the amateurs, was you was you like a chubby kid? I was thick. Cause you used to fight muscle. Danny Jacobs and the motherfuckers. A lot in the, of muscle. And the amateurs and yeah. shit. They they come out fighting at 160 with all that shit. Yeah. You I used to lean them back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. I had a lot of muscle. And um and my boxing style was slightly different. I I was a little I, I had more base in the amateurs and I believed in my power and I was really throwing them, you know. When I first turned pro it was the same thing, but when I moved down to 47, I started. You turned pro at 154, right? I was turned pro at 54. Yeah. And then when I moved down to 47, <coughs> I was watching how fast those guys were. And I was like, Shh, I got to be fast like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I stopped really throwing with the, the intent to hurt. I was throwing with intent to hurt, but not the same kind of yeah. power and, and torque and things mm-hmm. like that like I did in the amateurs, you know? Who's some of the people you fought in the amateurs? <clears throat> you name them, I fought them. Demetrius Andre, we fought at. We fought at 165 twice. I fought uh, Daniel you Jacob. You little as shit to be fighting. <laughs> you was fighting some fucking killers. In he this. said he got reach on me. Did you see it? Like, you know, it's a smirk. Everybody had it's reach a, on It's you. a smirk. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, pr- I think the tallest I fought was 6'5". Maybe 6'. What? How yeah. the fuck did that work out yeah. for you? Knocked him out. <laughs> yeah, how the fuck did you even hit him yeah. in his fucking face? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just you just got him on the roof with all body on him. <laughs> That's crazy. It's it's interesting. Um there's a way that you can you can like I it's like I would always say, um, you could be taller than me, but when we get in the ring, we're the same size. Because I had my movement and the way that I boxed, I was able to take to force guys to stoop down. I was able to force guys, even if they stood up, I was able to to force them to to to, to commit to their punches too much because they trying to catch me and they trying to reach me and things like that. And then what I had, like I was a hybrid boxer. Yeah. And ain't too many hybrid boxers out there. Boxers they I got speed and power. Mm-hmm. So in the amateurs, I could I could use my quickness with my feet, take your 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 um your your uh, your range away from you, mm-hmm. and then land something that hurt you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like with that six five guy. Yeah, I outpointed him, and the amateurs it was a twenty point rule. Mm. In the first three rounds, if you up by twenty points, the, oh, the fight yeah, ends. Yeah, yeah. In the fourth round, if you go up by twenty, we let the fight continue. Yeah. In the third round, twenty point land was the same punch that put him out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, um, I fought Usyk, Alexander Usyk. Mm. The heavyweight, one hundred sixty five pounds. Yeah, yeah, damn, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we had a close fight for four Bro, rounds. Wait, hold on, hold the fuck up, hold the <laughs> fuck up. How y'all feel when y'all see each other? He like Sean, you like Usyk, you a fucking welterweight. He a fucking heavyweight. We like, no, we fought before. Yeah, <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, That's crazy. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the list goes on. Um, it's a guy from Philly. I always forget his name. Um, tall southpaw, black kid. Um, he fought in the amateur system, moved up. He turned pro with top rank, and uh, and he never got a belt. Um, I can I always forget his name, but another tall southpaw. Um, I'm trying to think who he talked about. Light skin, dark skin, dark skin. Yep. His dad was a uh, was a was a um, was a was a was a professional fighter too. You're not talking about Bozy. No, no. You're no, not no, talking not about Pua Farah. Uh-uh, no, 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 uh, no, 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 not Pua Farah. Uh, no. Dad was a professional fighter too. Oh, I think he Tim Witherspoon. Uh, uh-uh, nope. No, yeah. Witherspoon was a heavyweight too, though. Yeah, but shit, you was fucking yeah, fighting heavyweights. Heavy. <laughs> Cyclone, his uh, his Cyc- dad. Oh, 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 uh, Hart. Hart, yes, yeah. Jesse, Jesse Hart. Hart. Jesse Hart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You I fought fight Je- Jesse Hart. I fought Jesse in the amateurs. Yeah, Jesse Hart, big shit. Yeah, Jesse tall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Damn. God damn, dog. Ask you Jesse still had to fight Jesse. Ask Jesse, Jesse about me. <laughs> oh, you be fucked Jesse up. No, no, no. I, no, no, no. Jesse Stop. did. You no. did my nigga Jesse on, dirty, man. No. You did Jesse dirty in the amateurs. No, 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 no. Jesse about uh, no, me. No, 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 no. Did you win? Yes. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but it was a good boxing match, though. It was a good boxing match. Yeah, Jesse can rumble. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, that's what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, he, he, he wanted to say he fucked Jesse up without saying it. Ask Jesse about me. No, no, I'm just saying, like, you know, for somebody, you know, you're like, hey, I don't get how he could beat somebody 6'4", 6'2", with Jesse, like, 6'2"? Something like that, at least. Yeah. At least. Yeah, so, so ask him what that experience was like, being in the ring with somebody shorter and you know, he trying to be funny. <laughs> I think Hollywood Hart. Yeah, 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 yeah Jesse, yeah, Jesse, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's my man, man. Yeah. Jesse, good dude. Good yeah. dude, man. Damn, that's crazy. You used to fight them niggas, man. All them niggas way bigger than you, bro. Yeah, yeah. Question: What's your favorite Philadelphia fight of all time? <sighs> I'm not a boxing historian. All right, well, I'm gonna just throw some names out there. You know, I'm a, got, I mean, I'm a, I'm gonna say you, Joe Frazier. You got Joe. Mm. You got yeah. Bernard. Yeah. You got Danny Garcia. You got David Reed. You got Ivan Robinson. You got a uh, ain't what was I from? forgot David Reed was from Williams. Here. Uh, yeah, David Reed was from. I here. forgot. Yeah. Remember, David Reed had the eye issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. they uh, you got Stephen Fulton. You got Boots. You got Jerron Boots. And speaking yeah. of Boots. Where do you put boots in there with Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford? I think looking at the possibilities of how the outcome of Terrence and Errol is, it's much it's harder to look at that the, those outcomes or the outcome of that fight opposed to Terrence and and Boots or opposed to Errol and Boots. I think both those guys are extremely consistent. Errol and, and Terrence are extremely consistent at what they do. And I think Boots still, even though he's probably the most he's probably the most athletically gifted boxer in this world. Um probably even from a standpoint of, of determination and things like that. Yeah. Like he has he's the it. And he's gonna be the it. But I still see those guys beating Boots right now. Oh my fucking God. Sure, yeah. don't. Why you see that? No, he got to break this down. Well, because I, I do. I think that where Arrow has the ability to, to wear punches on his arms, block, be defensive, yet be offensive. But but they, I ha- they both have things You got to feel Boots' power. They both as... as prov- no, I don't. I'm retired <laughs> for a reason. Oh, all right. He said, no, yeah. I see, see that. No, I don't mean he know. Yeah. No, I don't. Because I, I I'll be training with him. You felt it? Yeah. That's what you get. That's what you get. I don't think no human should feel it. Yo, I like how he said that. Oh, I don't no, fucking I don't. That mean he know. No, I don't. No. Yeah, absolutely I know. Gone. <laughs> Done. But look at it. Truthfully, we, we've we seen him be consistently uh, charismatic in the ring, energetic in the ring, break guys down, all that kind of stuff. But in his last fight, he had a problem with the mover. So that's another adjustment. That's some, That shows something that we didn't really expect. Yeah, we but expected him to catch up to this dude. Whole but, 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 but it's a difference, Sean. We understand if, okay, a dude is moving, that dude was running. It's a different. Running. It, it's, <laughs> a, it's a difference. Like, he knows. If, if I'm a professional fighter and I got somewhat of good defense and I'm in the best shape of my life, I can't run 12 rounds without you knocking me out. Yeah. Because I'm not giving you nothing. Yeah. It's not like I'm throwing anything out there. You get to slip. You get to counter punch. You get, no, I'm just running up on you and I'm just bam, bam, bam. And you just, and then you run to this side <laughs> of the ring and then you, yeah. And then you run to this side. You're not giving me nothing. Well, all I'm saying is that whatever adjustments that could have been made, I really, again, to your point, I didn't see any adjustments that could be made. Me either. Because if he went into the center of the ring and said, come come here and fight me, that dude wasn't going to the center of the ring that, to fight him. And one thing when I was watching the fight, shout out to Jared Hurd, because Jared Hurd was sitting behind me, and we watching the fight, and Jared Hurd said, this dude ain't giving him nothing, man. He not fighting. Yeah. This this like the, this the worst kind of fight, because he not fighting. Yeah. He just he just trying to survive. His whole motive was to survive. I'm yeah. not, oh, he knocking everybody out. I'm not getting knocked out. I'm surviving. But to my point, 
somebody moving like that apparently that was something he had never either never seen before or they they just cutting off the ring and putting so much pressure on him that the referee come in and say all right that's enough that's the only adjustment that could have been made right. you cut the ring off even even more than you already was and and let's let's keep it real a lot of punches were swung and missed by him yeah you got a great mover yeah. this dude was a rabbit yeah. moving the whole night 100 <laughs> yeah. percent. right but do something to make these rep this ref Get this dude up on the roads, rough him up, do something. My point is, whatever adjustment that could have been made, I didn't see that adjustment. Right. To cut but, off the ring but, and and put apply so much pressure to this guy. And again, what what you you have not seen that before. Right. You have not seen Arrow before. Somebody that's gonna walk you down and block him and things like that. You have not seen a Terrence Crawford, somebody that's going to switch and move and be offensive and defensive and control the, the range. Those guys are very consistent I want, I advise, at what they I do want, well. I wouldn't advise Earl to attempt to walk boots down. That's going to be a dark alley. Ooh. I wouldn't advise I believe him. it. He's not going to walk him down. I believe it. Not boots. That yeah. he, you, he do you walk. think they punch hard as, hard as boots? I can't imagine they don't. What? Boots is, boots is a natural 147-pound fighter. Arrow's a fighter coming down every single fight. He's a natural 147 pound fighter. Terrence now is a natural 147. He's come up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And they're grown, they're grown men. He's still growing into the power and things like that. He may have his grown man power, but I'm sure it's still got he got some steps to take. You know what I mean? All right, so after this fight, whoever wins. We don't see, we don't see Terrence versus. Boots. We don't see Terrell, uh We don't see Arrow versus Boots. It's never gonna happen. I don't think that fight ever happens. Why? Well, you never got Keith Thurman versus Mayweather. You never got Sean Porter versus Pacquiao. You know those guys were just on another level from us. And even though we were calling their names and say, "Yeah, we'll fight them," and we're trying to establish ourselves and things like that, that's where Boots is within the boxing world. He's practically established at this point. Mm-hmm. But from a standpoint of uh, who you bring into the to the to the stadium and how many and how much what, what what's your what's your base your uh your your purse minimum? Mm-hmm. He don't got the same purse minimum as those guys, right? And he's he I mean he's still what another year away from that kind of purse minimum. Mm-hmm. In another year, those guys will be up at one fifty four, and he'll be chasing them at fifty four. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think we ever see Terrence and or Arrow get in the ring with Boots. Mm. Mm. I don't think that's it the either. business, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't think it either, but I don't know if it's about business or not. I ain't mad at that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I ain't mad at that. The young boy, I love Errol, and that's my nigga. But you know, I knew Boo since he was twelve years old, so yeah. shit like that. So that's nephew. You know, what he I mean? different, different, different. different. Now, you know when he's my, like, it, interesting. you know when motherfuckers gonna see how different he is? July eighth. When he get this nigga Roman Villa out of here in four rounds, you promoting the next fight? I'm just Go saying. Ahead, I'm just saying. July, that's when he just. I just found out that's when he fight. He fought the guy that just dusted Rashidi Ellis yeah. off. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw that. Watch how easy this is. Yeah. Mm. He's not gonna run for twelve because he's rounds. not gonna. He gonna stand there and rumble. Yeah, he gonna get put out. See, this is what I don't like about boxing. How can I fight a man that didn't throw no punches? I win. Every round and get criticized. That's but boxing it just don't make no fucking sense, man. Boxing do not make Did no I just sense. Criticize no, him? no, I'm just saying the word the, the the media. I was trying to use it as an not analogy. Not necessarily yeah. you. I'm saying the media. Do you you look at the YouTube joints? All of a sudden, he ain't ready for this person. He ain't ready. Wait, he just ran. won every second of every round with yeah. a motherfucker through <laughs> forty punches the whole fight. Yeah. And then get the motherfucker him. came there and give you nothing to work with. He just said, I'm just not getting knocked out. That's my only goal. My only goal in this fight is to get a check and not get knocked the fuck out. Yeah. This man won every second of every round. And motherfucker said, he ain't ready. He ran. Wait, 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 hold on. He had another professional fighter who was ranked number four in the division who came in. As soon as he felt a motherfucker punch missed him, he felt the air on that motherfucker. Say, oh, what the fuck's going <laughs> on? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I think the fight we get now is the fight we should have saw last time. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to get... Gonna I think get, stylistically, it, it would have made more sense for... But for Rashidi Roman Ellis and, was talking shit. He wanted to fight. But if you, look, if you look at that kid who Boots fought, fought he never fought like that. 
I said the same thing. He's did, like, he's from here with it. Did not know that he was going to come to the ring and do that. Now you fight boots and you talk about. <laughs> Wallo will tell you, after the fight, the referee is sitting right here in front of me because we in the front row. He letting the, the people go. He said, yo, Gilly, can I get a picture with you? So I said, yeah. I said, man, why you let that man come in and steal that <laughs> money like that? Man, man ran the whole fight. The ref said. That man was in the best shape I ever seen anybody in oh, the last no. 20 years <laughs> on everything I love. The ref said, man, that man was in. He said, because run when, he said because when he got to about the seventh, eighth round, I was like, he going to slow down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said he didn't slow down. Yeah. Wow. So did you watch him before the fight or after the fight? No, I had to go back and watch. I had to watch go back nigga, and watch, watch too. Before, like, did this dude, this how the nigga fight? <laughs> then yeah. I'm like, no, he's actually rumbling. Yeah, right yeah, here. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So that just let me know, okay. Boots really that ball, man. Yeah. He really, when, when you feel it, see, one thing's for sure, two things for certain. There's one thing Boots always say. Everybody talk that shit till I touch him, Gilly. Mm. Then when I touch him, it's a whole different ball game. Mm. Once I touch him, everybody think it. Once I touch him, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. I talked to him and his dad. And he, and he, you know, he was real short with me. He, he didn't like some of the things I said on my well, podcast. What you say about it? Oh yeah, you did say some crazy I keep it real, shit. Man, I don't no, like... you said some crazy yeah, shit about what he boots. Say? I can't remember. Hold on, let me think. Well, tell him where you heard it first of all. Tell him where you heard it. Uh, Porter's Porter the Porter Way, Way podcast. podcast. He don't know. He that's the Porter Way podcast. <laughs> Make sure y'all tune yes, into it. No, you actually got a, you got some good shit going on over there. <laughs> Thank you, man. Porter Way podcast. That's what where I heard he it. Say? But he, I can't fucking remember. This was a while ago. This too. is what I said. Damn it. And we gonna we gonna open this come up on, again. Come on, let's open this can of And they was mad up. about it. I said, I'm tired of people, everybody walking up to me saying boots washes everybody. I said, as a competitor, I can't get with that kind of conversation. I don't connect with that kind of conversation. I'm too competitive to look at, at another fighter and say, Oh, you wash everybody. I said, let him get in the ring with some of these guys and stop saying he just washes everybody. Let him fight Terrence. Let him fight Errol. Let him fight some of these other guys out here. Let him fight um, the, uh, Danny Garcia and some of these other guys out here that everybody says, oh, he washes this guy. He washes. Let's, let's see it. Let's see it. He's great. I, get, I give you that. You're, he, you're great. You're on a Roy Jones level. Where there probably ain't nobody that's going to stop you until you start, you stay in there too long and you start stopping yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the level that he's on. But at the same time, I don't like that people just say, yo, he's going to watch that guy. He's going to watch this guy. Like, yo, let's, let's, let's well, let it happen. He told him come out of retirement. Boots told him to come out of retirement. I told him no. I love it. At the end of the day, you are here to entertain me. Man, because at the end of the day, you are here to entertain me. Yeah. I'm not, I'm a civilian now. Yeah. I ain't got to worry about getting in the ring with right. nobody or doing, getting prepared for nothing. Call, retire, I'm here for you. I know you is. <laughs> so I might come spar with you, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I love, hey, I love this nigga though. Because he is it. He is the shit quick. <laughs> we really come out of retirement. I'm here for you. I know he is, <laughs> but I ain't here for you, nigga. I retired. <laughs> this is what you do all show, like you just yeah, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I don't be knowing. I said, you don't be knowing. So that's all he want to do is. No, he was arguing. But that's but how. You, but let's, but let's, let's 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 really let's analyze. He said, I spar with you though. But let's analyze. No, no, no. I don't even know why I said that. I don't know. Oh, see, see. I got, yeah, I got excited. I got, I got excited. <laughs> I forgot I said it. <laughs> Straight up. I was like, cut it off. <laughs> Listen, let's analyze this though. When uh -huh. Roy Jones popped on the scene, nobody stopped him. Nobody. He was the kind of guy that, I don't, I don't know how people talked about boxing back in the day, but you know how they always keep saying that Boots hasn't been tested yet. Mm -hmm. Boots ain't, ain't been in this and he ain't mm -hmm. seen that yet. Oh, that sound good. Roy never had to go through that process. Roy was knocking them down, knocking mm -hmm. them down. And I think we got the same thing with Boots. Boots going to run it. But if you saying Boots got Roy Jones type talent, but you saying Terrence and Errol could get them, get him out of it, then you because, saying Terrence and my, Errol could because, get Roy out of there. Because, no, it's my eye test. Back in the, Roy was 147. Roy was the, Roy was the man. But that's and, what, Bo and Boots is the man. But the eye test is telling me that I can't just say that 
what he's done with all these other competitors that are not at this at the level of a of a uh, Errol Spence or of a Terence Crawford. I don't know if that if if everything that he does that he's done against those guys if it's gonna work the same against Errol if it's gonna work the same against Terence. Man, do you know I, I done seen Boost drop heavyweights in the gym, bro? I believe it. I'm talking about you trying to scare me right no, now. No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying, I done seen boots put down a what fucking you me heavyweight this in the gym, bro. Yeah, a heavyweight, yeah. bro. Boom, boom. That's what we do. And it's like it's what we do. See, it's not uncommon. Oh, it's not uncommon. You done no. put down some heavyweights. Yeah, absolutely. Oh shit, I didn't know that shit. I started sparring with pros when I was 14 years old. <laughs> so this not is. taking nothing away from boots, no, but that's the same thing. When you're at a certain level. You can't just spar with anybody. Now it has right. to be pros. Right. Absolutely. And it's got to be durable pros. Right. It can't be pros at your weight class because right. you too good for pros right. at your weight class. So right. now you fight professional heavyweights. Right. I get it. Right. One thing about Boost, though. Yeah. Ever since Boost was a kid, he always had a bad name for not, he couldn't get no work. Because he was too much. Because he'd kill you in there. Yeah. He don't give a fuck. I don't Boots, know why I said I green. was going to He only got four fights. Boots be over there like this. No, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Boots. No. Boots, chill out. No. Boots don't give a fuck. Boots, <laughs> you step on that other side of that fucking ring with Boots. No. If you want. He don't give a fuck. You're green, oh. pink, orange, blue. He going to beat you black and blue in that motherfucker. Boots can't get no fucking sparring, man. Man, listen, man. I, I done had a lot of fighters be like, man, we got off on Sean. We got him. We got him. Well, you weren't on my level, so I was just trying to take it easy. And right. The shit backfired. <laughs> oh, right. No, see, you in there working on your jab. Ain't no yeah. such thing with that shit with yeah. Boots. <laughs> but Boots, all Boots see is motherfucking <laughs> green. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just, I got somebody to spar with me. All right. <laughs> this shit gonna go a minute and 30 seconds. Bop, bop. Uh, you, watching, you, you watching spar? What? Yeah. He dangerous. Bro. He dangerous, bro. right? Bro, Boots last camp. Yeah. No fighter want more than four rounds with him. Yeah. No fighter. Man. They had the kids keep rotating. All right, he got four <laughs> rounds. Send him to the hospital. Come on, bring him in. He got four rounds. Stretcher. Come on. Send him to the hospital. Send Come him on. to the morgue. He's dead. You know, you know what he's what's gonna be his uh Achilles heel? What? As a fighter. He loves doing this so much. Oh my God. That he don't take no rest. No, he live, eat, and shit boxing, bro. And the last thing, that's what I told him when I when I had him on my show. I said, yo, make sure you're getting rest. Bro, he live, eat, and shit boxing, bro. Yeah. He, do, he do not play this shit. But guess what? LeBron James is one of the greatest ever. Mm -hmm. And he loves the sport. Mm -hmm. Has probably done this, probably probably done this probably five more years than he'd even need to do it. And he mm -hmm. gonna keep going. Mm -hmm. But he still get his rest. He still get his recovery. Mm -hmm. He's still making sure his nutrition is right and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Those are the small nuances that, again, along the way, you mm -hmm. need to learn these things before you start getting in the ring with the arrow or Terrence. You need to start not learning how to get rest through the week. Mm -hmm. Get get as much recovery as you do the work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like little small things. I think that that's one thing that that really could um, show up for 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 for. Uh, for for boots yeah. I, and I could be wrong. Yeah, he could be somebody that just don't need rest. Right, you know what I mean. Right, all he need to do is get in the ring with one of them, and they feel that power. Yeah, and we are gonna see if they got track I, sneaks. And I and I and I love his demeanor too. Yes. What what you what does he say? He's not a tough a, kid. He's not none of that. He just I mean I just box, man. I. And what did you say? He says everybody says that until they get in the room. What until is, they feel his, my feel power. That, feel that power. I That's touch why him. you said you said I, I want to feel that shit. Do I touch everybody say that Gilly? Do I touch him? Till I touch him. Girls it out. Me. Do I touch him? Me. Everybody say Sean's an hour. Do I touch him? Me. As soon as I touch him. Like, see, for me, I just I just believe in that kid because when you when you got that much talent, first of all, his dad is known in the city of Philadelphia for being the best defensive trainer. And it's from the city of Philadelphia. Mm. So one thing you know when you went up to Bozies to get any fucking work was it's gonna be hard to hit these niggas. Yeah. This ain't these wow. niggas is going. You you went to that motherfucking gym that was over top of that mash jig. The one thing you knew was ain't shit in that gym see, gonna work. See, because that's what I always saw out of Farah. Ain't nothing in Farrah that gym. Farah was always right. defensive. 
ain't nothing in that gym gonna work. Wow. Them motherfuckers might be in there jumping yep. ropes with no jump ropes we, in their motherfucking hands. We, they might be in there like this. We 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 like we came up together. Like we were yeah. fighting on the same um promotion, promotional team, me and Farah. And my, me and my dad, we let that say, yo, Farah's good. He a little too defensive. Mm-hmm. He didn't let his hands go a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Now you got boots. Just as defensive, is he? Yes. But then more offensive, right? Sheesh. Because you gotta understand. Boots. That's what that's what I was gonna say. Right. I was gonna say he's like a Shakur Stevens and a and a um and a Tank Davis put the put right. together. Because Boots came out the vagina into a fucking boxing gym, man. <laughs> yeah, you gotta understand. Boots used to be a kid, probably five years old, four years old, and he's sitting in the ring, and his brothers coming down the aisle going to fight. Yeah, and his dad the trainer. Yeah, and then he at the gym every day. His brother sparring, and then I just told Boots, I said, "Listen, man, the only motherfucker that's gonna be colder than you is his nephew mm. right now mm. because he dropped out the vagina mm. into the boxing gym. See a nigga right now, he's six years old, throwing all kinds of combinations. Yeah, You're like, yeah. what the yeah. fuck? See, but it come from it. Yeah. See, see, but Bozy, Bozy was a twenty-seven and a half time black belt in ghetto karate. Okay. So that's where he got all the defense shit. What from. the hell? Yeah. <laughs> now, Bozy, we used to, we used to, we used to spar back in the day. Bozy do karate and yeah. shit, but he's a, he not, he's a fucking pink belt. He be hyping his status. Get the fuck out he of be here. hyping his day. He was a pink belt in prison. How you get he, a half a belt? <laughs> no, because he went up against Karate Earl and they called it a draw. That was my sensei. Bozy fought my sensei, Karate Earl, and they called it a draw. Karate. Karate, first of all, Karate Earl. First oh, of all, let me just tell you who this nigga was, was right? I didn't want to say it. Twi- this nigga was an ex-Vietnam nigga who used to take <laughs> kids to the fucking park and teach them karate. Like he was on drugs. He used to get a check oh, every month no. and spend all his money on pussy or hooker oh, pussy. Am no. I telling the truth? No, but he did used enough. to spend time with the kids, and Wallo used to be one of the fucking kids <laughs> over there in the park. He over there with all this dumb Bozy ass shit. know about it? Come on, cuz. Fuck no. I see, I'm three years old. Like, like, he. So forced- I used to think that shit was weird. Like, why he just want to take <laughs> kids to the park and just something wrong with that Karate nigga, man. Karate Earl not- forced, forced Bose into martial arts retirement. Because he was shit. he was devastated. I don't wear that shit. He got a draw. I don't wear that shit. But anyway, he used to be in the park with his old fucking <laughs> Vietnam nigga teaching him karate for no fucking reason. And he's talking hey, about listen, him. Listen, man, you still here. That's all that matters. Yeah, you still man. here. I practice the arts. Fuck out of here. <laughs> so before we get out of here, Sean, I got to know. They give you $100 million, but you got to bet it on the fight. Sheesh. You got to put it on Errol Spencer, Terrence Crawford. Who's you dropping that hundred million on? And why? And why? Come on, man. You got to do it. When you look at Terrence Crawford, and for me, I go beyond the fact that he fights from the left, from the left hand, and 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 fights from the from the from the right hand, and you know, I I go beyond that. He's still one of the most versatile fighters in the ring. And he adaptable. He's adaptable, you know, and that I I I would I would believe in a little bit more, and it's like I said, like it's this is consistency versus consistency, and this is what we know about life. If you're consistent at what you do every single day, you're gonna be successful. These guys, you got one guy very consistent at adapting, and another guy very consistent at being controlling. You know what I mean? But then you got another guy, this same guy that's adaptable, he liked to be in control. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm going to adapt when I'm ready to adapt. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I just, I think it's it's a masterful fight. It's a fight that I think the world needs to be seeing. I think that uh, the numbers should be like the numbers of of Arrow, uh, of uh, Ryan Garcia and, and Tank Davis. Mm-hmm. I hope that they are because you're going to see what boxing is mm-hmm. in this fight. Mm-hmm. I would put that hundred million on Terrence. Damn. Mm, 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 mm. We right. we usually pick the same. We're not picking the same on this one, huh? I mean, um, I don't know, man. Both anybody could win, man. Terrence is a anybody bad can motherfucker. Win. Arrow is a bad. Then why the hell you make me man? pick? Because you are guest. <laughs> <laughs> now before we get out of here, I gotta ask you a question. Top five boxers now. Top five boxers yesterday. Sheesh. Now, I think now is probably a little easier. Uh, might be able to do both. Um, no order, no specific order. 
but uh tank mm-hmm. uh i'm gonna go tank uh arrow terrence shakur he don't have the profile yet but he's and and i'm gonna go ahead and go with boots too them two guys right there that with who they are right now as fighters their profiles don't reflect who they are right now mm-hmm. They're they're gonna be Hall of Famers. They're gonna be everything, and you see it now. They just haven't had the right fight at the right time to really put them in that in that in that in that elite status for the sake of words. But both those guys, Boots and Shakur, I think those are two guys that we can bet that they're gonna be unbelievable, phenomenal uh, boxers until they're done. Um, on the other side of that, marvelous Marvin Hagler is my number one. Mm. Um, Muhammad Ali for the things he did in the ring and out of the ring. Mm-hmm. I think that that is just mm-hmm. next level. Again, one, once in a lifetime generation mm-hmm. type situation right there. Mike Tyson. Mm. I think again, like starting to it's learn Mike after the after the game mm-hmm. gave me more respect for who he was in the ring. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, Floyd. Mm-hmm. There's you were never gonna see another fighter have one style in the beginning of their career and a completely different style at the end of their career. Mm-hmm. We'll never see that. Mm-hmm. We'll see fighters do different things in the mm-hmm. ring, but he went from being electrifying, mm-hmm. power punching, mm-hmm. aggressive, fast, all that, to being defensive. You mm-hmm. can't touch me, and I'm gonna touch you when I'm ready to touch you. Right. We'll never see anybody change their style again the way that Floyd was able to do that. What's that? Three? Four. Four. That's four. Um, one more. Roy. Mm. That's a good Roy. Choice. Mm. Roy was a bad motherfucker. Roy was an athlete wrapped up in a oh boxer's body. God. Roy started losing to he started doing videos and songs and shit. <laughs> he was rapping. So he, yo, must have forgot his lights went out. <laughs> Roy, you must have forgot to go to the fucking gym. <laughs> Oh man, I can't laugh at that. Can't Roy, laugh at that. Let me say, Roy got his money, man. <laughs> like, can't laugh Roy, at like, that. Roy got his money. Roy know goddamn well he ain't. Roy ain't start losing to the video <laughs> vixens came in the play. Motherfucker, well, video. He started hanging with Lil John and all them niggas. Oh no! They like, cut Roy electricity right off. <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up, man. Roy, my guy, man. Yeah, Boy, I, we I gotta, can tell. Come yeah. on, man. We gotta learn how. To, we gotta keep reality reality. Yeah, like, uh, you know, you some know realities well. don't need to be said. No, though, come on, you, you know, know damn well, well Roy ain't starting right, until he starts rapping. We know, we know. We ain't gotta talk about it out loud. I can't co-sign this, man. <laughs> All right, well, we know we gonna co-sign <laughs> the Port Away Port Away podcast. podcast. Port away podcast. Make sure that, y'all man. like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, yeah, he's doing his thing, y'all. As y'all know, he is very well versed. We're gonna do a charity match, me and him. Vegas. Uh, I'm trying to get somebody to sponsor. Anybody uh, want to sponsor? Listen, the charity match. We doing it in what, Vegas. One of the big hotels is gonna sponsor. Listen, man. What did this fight happen in June 29th? Oh Never. no! Or, excuse me, July 29th. Yeah. Ar- Ar- Arrow and, and Terrence. Yeah, they put y'all on the undercard. No, no, no. We not gonna be on the undercard. We gonna be the night before. We, Ooh. we, yeah. All right. Ooh. Yeah, we the appetizer. Let, let, let me just say that I got gear for you. I don't need no gear. I got a gym for you. I, I got the ring that. for you. I don't need no gear. So. You see how we talk about boots and all of he retired. For you, he will he get out. there. He what for that buddy? Absolutely. He, he'd be right on your ass. Absolutely. <laughs> he think I'm free money. That's no, why. we just going yeah, to record you it. I don't need to get paid money. for that. Yeah, Fuck I don't need to get paid for that. Damn, he like, he just going to go viral. Yeah, we just going to record that. He too wild on the fuck. Yeah. He, and, and, and when it's done, you can say, "I thought I had the reach." No, this is and, 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 and then fade out of the camera. That's all. I thought I had the reach, and then fade out. So of did the six five nigga that he broke down like a goddamn motorbike in a, in a, as an amateur. He yeah. thought he had the reach too. Yeah, this motherfucker fight nigga yeah. six five and shit. He like five seven five eight, breaking shit down. But listen, Port Away Podcast. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, check that thing out, man. He's very well versed in the, the conversations that he's giving out, and he's very opinionated too. And he says a lot of shit people don't like, but <laughs> you gotta respect it because uh, it's coming from somebody who really was in the ring and really did his thing. Hall of Famer. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Yeah, I mean, Thank Showtime, you. Sean Porter, man. Appreciate you for stopping through, brother. Yeah, appreciate you, big. Yes, sir. Uh, the Porterway Podcast. Check it out, baby. Right, and it's just like that. Right.